think that's going to impact the um, increase, increasing requirements while cutting the money to the district at the same time? I think um, with these, with the budget cuts, I mean, it's going to affect it real big. I mean, I mean, sometimes I think that they don't, people don't think, they just react um, to um, the situation. It's like let's get the let's get the kids these requirements, but we don't have the money to do it. So I think um, that you know, I hope that what I do hope is that the kids don't drop out because of. You know, um, because the the, it's, the requirement is on them, but they don't have enough resources to go through. So it goes back, falls right back on the kid, and the, and the kid just drops out. And currently, we have about a fifty percent dropout rate, and for African American boys and Latino boys, it's much higher. So that is not good. But I've also seen something that's troubling in that the kids are getting a little younger that are le physically leaving the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, at eighth grade, we're seeing dropouts and some seventh graders, and that's frightening, because I'm saying, where is a 12-year-old go, a 13-year-old go, and what do they do all day if they're not in school? And so we need to wrap ourselves around that as a community mm -hmm. and encourage children to stay in school and then work, out, work through their problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how would you do that? Do you have parent sessions, parent training sessions? Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you that. Yes, we do have um, leadership training and also parent sections. Or we have other organizations that we um, work with or collaborate with to make sure that, you know, the, the whole family gets mm -hmm. the, um, the resources. And, you know, you know a lot of those groups like ALI and other things. What do you think about ALI, by the way, as the Advocate Leadership <laughs> Institute? I have to say, and Junius Williams is the director at Rutgers University. Um, but what do you think about vouchers and charter schools, and, and um, how does that fit into the grand uh, thing of improving schools in Newark? Um, wow. Um, I, I think that the parent should have a choice. Um, um, I'm not for, i publicly say I'm not for charter schools, um, but I think that if the community want it, because I think it's it's all about the community, mm -hmm. what the community wants, that a lot of people don't, I mean, a lot of decision makers don't um, look at it that way, but it's what the community wants, um, then charter, if they choose it, then let it be. But otherwise, personally, I'm not for charter schools. I like public schools. The traditional the public schools. Because the they, they schools. will argue that charter schools are public <laughs> exactly. schools too. Now, the parents, in case they don't know, the charter school does not follow the guidelines, does not have to follow the guidelines of the federal or state guidelines as traditional public schools do. So, therefore, we have uh, some disparity, and they are entitled to get the same amount of money allocation per student as the traditional public schools. Now, where the rub for me is that. If a child gets kicked out of a charter school and returns to the, to the traditional public school, the money does not follow. And so we've seen some things that have raised eyebrows, such as in December, and October to December, the enrollment is ever increasing at the charter schools. <laughs> and in January through June, they're increasing in the public schools because those children have been transferred back to the traditional public schools. And then the other challenge I'm understanding is that they don't serve special needs children very well. Did you have you heard that kind of? Yes, uh, I've, I've heard that also too. I've, um, and I mean that's why I say that I'm not in too. I'm not favored for it because I think a child, no matter what, you know what the um, deficiencies of the child, should be getting an education. And I don't think, and that's where that choice thing when when mm. when they don't you know, charter don't accept a child because he's special need. I think that's the problem that I have. Seriously. Well, they, they, will argue, <laughs> they will argue with you that there's a fair lottery going on. And of course, there are those who say that the lottery is politically motivated. It's all about who you know. And there's that, those who say, no, it's a blind lottery, meaning that, you know, if your number comes up, it comes up. And if it doesn't, your child doesn't come there. But I think the real issue is to build, make all these schools accountable to the parents in the community and make sure all children have opportunities. Exactly. Because we have far too many children in traditional public schools and charter schools. So the small group that do attend charter schools 
you know, there's no way we can talk about changing that landscape um, when you have the numbers skewered as they are. And so we have to be very careful. I think it's better as a community organizer, I know you're out there beating the drums, um, to make sure that the parents understand your obligation is to go and support children right. at a Dayton Street or right. Avon Avenue, et cetera, and making sure you hold someone accountable. Exactly. And I think that's the issue, too, that we need to talk about, the relationship of accountability. Who do you hold accountable? When do you hold them accountable? And what is accountability? What right. does that look like? Would you, do you do any trainings on that kind of thing, your organization? Or as a community organizer, do you talk to parents about that? Oh, definitely. I think that's, that's my biggest um, on tutor.